from cruise lines selling more ships, and some disappointing news from our favourite Caribbean island, to the latest news from Carnival, Royal Caribbean and more. We have all of the latest cruise news for you. Well ahoy, ahoy there, there cruisers! We're Cruise with Ben and David. Welcome to this week's Cruise News Roundup. First up, news from Holland America. They have sold four of their ships, the Amsterdam, Maasdam, Rotterdam and Veendam. The four ships have been sold in pairs. So the two S-Class, Marsdam and Veendam cruise ships are transferring to an unknown company in August. But the two R-Class ships, Amsterdam and Rotterdam, will move to the British cruise line Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. That's some great news. They'll be renamed the Bolette and the Borealis. Nice names. So that's great news to see two of the ships going to another cruise line instead of being scrapped. Yeah, and let us know in the comment section below if you've sailed on these ships before and if you're disappointed to see them leave the uh, Holland America fleet. So Royal Caribbean's former Monarch of the Seas has made her final voyage to Turkey this week. Unfortunately, it's going to be her final resting place as she will be scrapped. She last sailed with Pullman Tour Cruises, the Spanish arm of Royal Caribbean that recently went bust. And along with Monarch of the Seas, the former Sovereign of the Seas will also be sold off. Next, Richard Fain, CEO of Royal Caribbean, has given an update of whether Royal Caribbean ships will be sold or not. He said that there were no current plans to sell ships in their fleet, but it's still a consideration. He also confirmed the capacity of ships will be initially reduced. He said he expects the capacity levels for the starting up of cruising to be at about 60 or 70 percent. He also explained why they are working with Norwegian on the healthy sail panel that we told you about last week. He said he spoke to the CEO of Norwegian and discovered that they were working on the same thing. So he suggested they work together to make it more impactful. And since working together, he said it's been a wonderful experience. That's really great to hear. Yeah, that is great to hear. They're working really hard to get cruising up and running again, which is fantastic news. He also outlined the four tiers of making cruise ships safe to sail. So the four tiers are number one is screening. So making it more difficult for COVID to get on board the ships in the first place. Step number two is on board the ship, which will include lower capacities and removing things such as self-service buffets. So number three is the destinations that the ship visits. They need to make sure that they are not bringing the disease to any destinations and that nobody's bringing the disease back on board the ship. And number four is what happens if there is an outbreak on a cruise ship. They need to make sure that they can handle it smoothly, safely and efficiently on board and that they are able to get people home safely. So some good news from Royal Caribbean. They have significantly reduced refund delays to under a month. Fantastic news, making them one of the fastest, if not the fastest, cruise lines to provide refunds. And we can confirm this with our cancelled sailings. We got our refunds really quickly, so well done, Royal. Yeah, it was a nice little surprise, wasn't it? Next up, news from the UK. The Foreign Commonwealth Office, or FCO, have gave more information about its blanket ban on not to cruise since our show last week. Cruise lines held emergency meetings to discuss lobbying against the travel ban during the week. So they have now clarified the advice around the much criticised ban on cruise ships, now allowing Brits to take river cruises for the first time in months, stating the ban is just for sea cruising. River cruise ships are much smaller by comparison than ocean liners and carry far fewer passengers. This is fantastic news and because River ships are closer to land. They are also always close to cities and hospitals and things like healthcare providers. It means that you have much more chance of receiving better care. So it's great news to see that river cruising will be starting again. We really can't wait for our next river cruising adventure. Cruises around Britain should also be exempt from the official guidelines, which only apply to international travel on a ship. For some reason, this doesn't include ferries, so they are uh, exempt as well. Yeah, so ferries to foreign countries are absolutely fine, which is, again, ridiculous, but cruises are not. They're basically exactly the same thing. It's good news because British Isles cruises look to be safe, so cruise lines such as Hurdy Girton and Saga, who we're considering round-trip cruises, can, uh, can do that safely. Yeah, so not going anywhere but Britain, which is great because we've got so much to offer here. So news from Carnival Cruise Lines. The Carnival Fantasy has reportedly been sold. The ship was recently in Caraco offloading heavy equipment. She's heading to Izmir in Turkey to be scrapped. That's really sad news. 
But some good news from Carnival, they have said that they will be able to go another full year without cruises. They hope to be sailing a lot sooner than that though, but they made it clear that they are financially okay for another year without sailing if necessary. Carnival said, quote, we are aggressively shedding assets while actively deferring new ship deliveries, and that they have secured over $10 billion in additional liquidity to withstand another full year in zero revenue scenario. That's really great. And they've also revealed that 45% of the bookings for 2021 are guests who are actually brand new to Carnival. That's really encouraging. It makes us so much more comfortable as well booking with them, knowing that they're going to be safe financially in the long term. Yeah, lots of rumours going around on the internet at the moment, but it's good to hear that from Carnival. Next up, in other news, Key West is looking to ban large cruise ships. It's not good news, but the Key West Committee for Safe Cleaner Ships wants to reduce the number of ships calling, stating the COVID-19 crisis to help their argument. The ballot for this will take place in November. If it passes, large cruise ships could be turned away. They want to limit the total number of cruise passengers to 1,500 a day, and any ship that carries more than 1,300 persons, including the crew, will be prohibited. This means the large majority of ships will not be allowed, so it basically would wipe out cruises for all cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Carnival, Princess, because even the smaller 1,000 person ships have 500 crew on board. Yeah. So none of these could do it. Really disappointing that. Key West is a popular port in that region, isn't it? Yeah, and it's unfair once again because as many coach companies or other travel companies could travel there by other means, as many flights as they want can go down there as well. So, so once again, the cruise industry has been unfairly targeted, we think. But in contrast to that, one Caribbean island is starting to reopen, but have said that masks will be mandatory. St. Martin has slowly started to open its borders. On their website, they say, quote, the friendly island is proud to announce that we will soon be welcoming back our international visitors to our beautiful shores. We kindly ask that you read our health and safety protocols and travel requirements before arriving. So what does these protocols actually include? Wearing a mask at all times, adhering to social distancing, avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth and have a negative test ready and a copy of a health declaration form. Gosh, that's so many things. Plus, wearing a mask at all times, even on the beach, that's going to be crazy in that hot weather. It's going to be a while until the world returns to normal again, we think. Yeah, plus the fact that they are requiring all visitors over the age of 10 to have proof that they have a negative test taken no more than 72 hours prior to the day of travel. Oh, that makes cruising how... there basically impossible at the moment. Yeah, how are they going to do that? Are the ships going to have to do the tests on board or do you think they'll just miss the island out completely? Yeah, I can't see that happening at all, which is upsetting because it's one of our favourite islands. Port Miami has agreed to continue to waive docking fees until August 30th. This is for ships that are using the facilities during the ongoing COVID crisis. Even though there are no passengers sailing, cruise ships still regularly need to dock for things like crew changes, repatriation, fuel and restocking food and other supplies. Usually, Port Miami charges a harbour fee of $525 for any vessel over 20,001 gross tons. They also charge $12.74 per embarking passenger. But it's really great to see one of the biggest cruise ports in the world supporting the cruise industry. Yeah, it is. So we've had a proper mix of um, stories this week. We would love to know your opinion on these. We'd love to hear your comments. So let us know in the comments section below what you would think of all of these things happening. And please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps us out and helps us grow. And we've got so much great content coming, especially once cruising resumes again. Big thank you to all our Patreons. If you'd like to support us further, you can find out more about Patreon in the description section below. And the captain of the week is Carter. So Ahoy. avoid there, Carter. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising! cruising. <laughs> <laughs>